everyone this is Abdul Shi we are at the 13th lecture of machine learning in the last lecture we have seen uh, how to build a decision tree model what are the theories behind it so today we will implement that using a Kaggle <coughs> notebook so as every time told Kaggle is a fantastic uh, platform you should really you know exploit its different features different notebooks that are presented by different experts okay so we start by uh, almost almost the same uh, content uh, couple of things will be there one thing is that for this particular uh, particular hands on we we'll need to install a library okay so uh, that is something we'll see new also this setting up input output variable fitting the model evaluating the model are going to be same but we are going to take a look at the different parameters of decision tree classifier which is quite important and uh, what I have seen is not adequately covered okay and so we will see the uh, see some of the parameters effect of some parameters we will also play around with different train test split okay and finally we will take a look at a regression tree so that's uh, the overall plan let's get started so this is what i was telling that in this case we will need to install a new library called as pi.plus which is not available in kaggle by default so install this library and uh, follow the instruction very carefully so you'll have to use this exclamation mark okay uh, for installing it over here all right now let's take up uh, the libraries that we need okay uh, it is same as you know uh, pandas numpy matplotlib we'll of course need decision tree classifier from sklearn other things like uh, trend test split and matrix matrix we have already seen okay now let's uh, import and inspect the data set so this data set is also a quite old data set so uh, here there are three classes uh, where and and each class belongs to one type of uh, seed kernel of wheat okay uh, gehu and uh, there are there are different uh, different features extracted from that x-ray images okay uh, so let's uh, run this and see the data set so what we'll see is that it has got 200 rows and eight columns okay and uh, this attributes attribute one to seven are the independent variable and finally you have the class variable the class variable has uh, basically if you look at this carefully uh, it has three unique values one two and three okay so if you look at its top two rows this is how it looks like so all these are numeric uh, values and finally you have the class okay and classes are from one to three now let's go ahead and feed the model like we do and before that let's set up the input and output so as usual i will take the first to uh, seventh column right uh, first to seventh column as the input and uh, the se seventh column as the output okay or the eighth column as the output and i will also collect the feature name in a list so let me run this okay uh, so I see the feature names being printed now let's go ahead and fit the model so there is not much that we need to do it is same as other uh, trend test splits then we just initialize decision tree classifier akin to how we are initializing the other models and then we do a clf.fit and then we predict it okay so let's do this okay. so now before I move there are few parameters this decision tree classifier takes okay so it takes some criteria so by default it is Gini okay there is a splitter criteria which is by default best max depth is none minimum sample split is two minimum sample leaf is one so there are several parameters so we will look at some of them okay so criteria we have already discussed right we can either use a Gini index or a entropy okay that is information gain splitter you can take the best attribute or you know if there are multiple attributes which are good you can take a random based max depth is how much depth you are allowing the uh, tree to have uh, minimum sample split is in each uh, when you are splitting from an internal node 
So what is the minimum number there should be there so that you allow a split? Minimum sample leaf is at the leaf node, how many minimum samples should be there to have a leaf node? Okay, and of course, uh, you have max leaf nodes. So max leaf nodes on, uh, says that how many leaf nodes you can have at maximum. So if you, uh, if you think uh, correctly, right, from our theory classes, if you can relate, then these three, four, five, six are all parameters which can help you control uh, the growth of the tree, which can help you uh, not overfit the data. Okay, now let's visualize the data. So uh, not much to do. Uh, I'm not going to uh, explain this. So basically, you will need some uh, other uh, visualizers. Okay, so you need I Python dot display. You need this Py dot plus library. So only thing that you need to change is you need to change your model over here, name of the model over here. If you are working with a different model, you change the name of the model. You give the feature name. So this is the list we have prepared and the class names for our class. Our case is going to be one, two, three. So if you have more classes and it has different names, so that's how you should do. Okay, so let's run this. And what will happen is that it will create a visualization like this. So this is your decision tree up and running. Uh, so one thing that you need to uh, look at over here is that, you know, you start with, uh, you know, samples like 50, 61 and 57. Okay. So basically when it says class equal to two, that means that the class two is the majority class, which you can see over here. How many samples were there in the training set? It was 168. Okay. And you are splitting by attribute seven and the Gini index at the root node is 0.664. Now, when the split is done, you will see that the Gini index is gradually coming down. It is gradually coming down. And uh, finally, you know, you, you go down, let's look at a node which is at the below. So you'll see that Gini index is zero. So all of these belongs to class one. Whereas here Gini index is again zero. Only one sample is there and class is three. Okay. So this is how the tree is built. And of course, you will think that, okay, maybe when I am allowing, you know, uh, when I'm allowing the samples to be have one sample, of course, there can be many splits. In fact, this decision tree for, uh, for a, you know, dimension of 200 to 7, this looks really long. Okay. So let's try to give some parameter and see. Okay, so what we can do is we can give a minimum sample leaf equal to 5. So in the sample leaf, we'll allow or the sample leaf will have minimum, you know, 5 observations supporting it. Otherwise, a leaf will not be created. So let's use this one and see how this looks like. Okay, how the tree changes now. Okay, let's run this. Okay, so now you see the tree. Uh, now, always you see the sample is 5. So it is not going down a sample size of 5. Okay, and uh, though the depth is, you know, almost same, the depth is almost same, but uh, the tree is not, no longer has that amount of depth. Okay, so let us, uh, let us increase maybe this further. Okay, so let's uh, go ahead and uh, change here from minimum sample leaf of 5. Let's make it a little bit more. Let's make it 20 and let's see the effect. Okay, so now if we visualize the tree, how it looks, let's see that. Okay, so yes, now the tree size is growing down. One flip side is that, you know, when you go to one of the uh, one of the nodes here, the Gini is still 0 0.477. So if you remember that the Gini needs to be zero, right? You know, as close as zero as possible. So this leaf node has zero, this two has zero, but these two are not that pure. This one is still fine, okay? But uh, this particular leaf node, you can see that the Gini is 0 0.477 because one, the first class and third class are quite close. The observations are quite close. So this is the way you can play around with different parameters. 
okay now uh, let us uh, you know let us go back and use our original uh, our original decision tree classifier so let me do the commenting and commenting now let us evaluate our model like the way we did for knn so we look at uh, the accuracy the confusion matrix and also uh, precision recall so if you run this you will see it has got accuracy of 1 so 100% accuracy and uh, you see that the precision recall will also be very very high right uh, now let us uh, further go and experiment with some of the things so what we intend to do is that let's change the depth of the tree so let let me start with maybe one and then i will allow you to grow up to maybe depth of 19 okay so this is what i am doing I, in an np array i am i am creating a range which will have so if you remember a range takes value like it, this is the starting value this is a stopping value and two is by the steps by which it will increment okay and it will not go up to 20 it will go up to 19 basically okay and similarly I have created an empty matrix to store the corresponding classification accuracies. Okay, so let me run this. Okay, so uh, my array is populated. Now let's draw this up. Okay, so what you see is that it's when when max depth is one, basically you know you are getting very very uh, low accuracy. And then slowly, as as you are increasing, you you are you are kind of stagnating when the max depth is around 11, which is close to one. You, you see, okay. And uh, so that is you you can you can actually change this little bit more and experiment. So uh, let me may let me maybe make it uh, 50. So 50 should give me 25. Uh, array of 25 so now let's run this okay and let's plot it again okay so now probably the effect is much more clear so you know uh, there there are peaks somewhere here and there but it, it kind of stagnates when when it is around eight or nine maybe you can go up to 10 okay so that then they, then it reaches play to and there is no further improvement okay so similarly you can play around with other parameters and this will give you an indication that whether your tree is being overfit or not okay so this is one of the very very uh, very very important way of checking this okay so now i thought of just adding this experiment so what we thought is just to demonstrate to you about this bias and variance that we are talking about and how with different seed values uh, the the random sample changes so the model changes and the accuracy changes so here what we are doing is we we, we are planning to take different seed values seed values uh, should be random but what we have done is we have taken uh, 500 seed values from 1 to 1000 okay with a gap of 2 right so let me run this so what is happening is look at this particular thing so i'm just changing the random state over here okay so this random state uh, is having the random state is having my integer equal to k which comes from here so different values i am passing here like we have we have done in the other case we are passing the maximum depth over here as a parameter right so earlier we are not passing anything here this k which is in this loop that we were using as parameter same thing we are doing over here okay and uh, now if we run this particular one it will take maybe a little bit more time because it is running for 500 times now okay and uh, if we plot it using a box plot so this is how it looks like you know uh, so you see that for some test set so this is the need to understand for some test set it is going quite below at 0 0.75 maximum or or the upper range is around accuracy of 100 percent and this is where the box plot is the median is around 0 0.91 or 92 okay 
now uh, let's come to our last part where we will fit a regression tree okay so we use the same advertising data set that we have used earlier and uh, we have used a decision tree regression we have taken the x and y values okay and we have used the similar kind of split and finally we have looked at the score okay so that that is very similar only thing that is to be noted is that we are using decision tree regression over here so that is the only thing that we are changing so let's run this and uh, you will see that uh, i'm not sure what's coming up let's run this again yes so it is coming with accuracy of 0.975 or 97.5 is the r square value so what was the meaning the meaning was that it could explain 97.5 percent of the variability okay so uh, you can see that this gives a better result than what we could achieve using our linear regression model so thanks for watching this uh, video the kernel link will be provided at the video description as always okay so feel free to give your comments and any questions that you have while you are trying to execute this kernel Thank you so much for watching.